Hey everyone, in today's video, I'm going to draw this mini bus or van in as many ways as possible using this mixed media art supplies that I have on my table. So I have colored pencils, water soluble color pencils, watercolor, walnut ink, fountain pens, markers, a bottle of ink, different inking tools and uh, dip pens, brush pens, water soluble pens, colored ink pens, crayons, water soluble crayons, graphite. So um, it's going to be a lot of fun. Today's video is actually inspired by this um, online art course that I took recently. This is on domestic car. So the artist is Adolfo Sierra. He is an illustrator, I think, from Spain. Anyway, he is a fantastic artist. He's very versatile. So he likes to create children illustrations with uh, all sorts of um, tools. So you can see he has a lot of different styles. And I'm really inspired by this course. So today I'm going to basically do the same thing. I'm going to draw just one subject using as many styles as possible. Let me just make some space on my table and bring out this sketchbook that I haven't been using for a very long time. This is a Strathmore 500 series mixed media sketchbook. I think the last time I drew in this was back in 2016. Yep, that's the date. So I actually use this sketchbook for mixed media work, which is a very appropriate sketchbook for me to use today. Let's start with the most familiar tool that I always use, pen and ink. So I'm just going to be drawing like really quickly because I just want to test out the different styles, like see how many styles I can actually draw uh, this vehicle with. So this is just pen and ink, and later on I will have pen, ink, and watercolor. This fountain pen that I'm using, this is a Sailor fountain pen with a zoom nib, which basically uh, means that the nib is quite thick, so the lines they are quite bold. The second style is also with pen and ink, but this time with watercolor, so I have this Daniel Smith watercolor sticks that I have squeezed into these pens here. So I'm just going to paint directly onto the paper without mixing the colors on the palette. Let's have some red shadows because um, why not? Just with ink alone, you can create a lot of different styles just by changing the tools you use or changing the drawing style. So now I'm going to draw with a dip pen. Actually, I don't want to use this particular one because I have to keep dipping into the bottle, which to me is a bit inconvenient. So I actually have a fountain pen that um, has a very similar nib to the dip pen. So in this case here, I'm going to draw with um, hatching lines. So, so this is a very messy type of uh, pen ink sketching style. It's not the traditional uh, type where you actually do like really beautiful uh, hatching, like this sort of parallel hatching. Um, yeah, so for those people who create this sort of art, um, I really salute you guys because it requires a lot of patience, which is something I do not have. Uh, with this particular style, you can actually hatch in the direction of the surface. So if the front is like this, you can hatch it like this. Okay, so I'm not particular, particularly good with this particular style. Uh, but it's still sort of recognizable as this vehicle, which is uh, great. 
and now let's use a brush pen so with a brush pen you will be able to draw like really thin lines as well as really thick lines uh, this is convenient if you are going to be doing a lot of inking like if you need to cover large areas very quickly using a brush it's very easy and if you want to have uh, the sort of dry brush look you can like swipe onto the paper very quickly to get that dry brush effect so you can get that textured look I am not that great with uh, drawing with brush because I tend to draw with a heavy hand so usually I would press down quite hard I have another brush that's filled with grey ink so let's just color this this ink is Lexington grey it's waterproof when dry if I remember correctly now this is a fantastic ink that you can use to refill your brush pens this is great for doing quick tonal studies like this with brushes you can get textures like this very easily next I'm going to draw this bamboo pen so I have to dip this with this uh, bamboo pen I have to draw a bit more carefully because uh, if there's too much ink on the tip it's going to drip onto the paper so there is already a lot of ink on the paper and I probably should place another piece of paper behind this page I can already see the ink bleeding through the page okay so this pen allows you to draw with uh, very textured lines oops too much ink again so that's the thing with drawing with this bamboo pen the lines will be um, unpredictable and you definitely need to use paper that is much thicker otherwise the ink depending on the ink that you use it may bleed through um, to the oops yeah it may bleed through to the other page so again too much ink here so you get this very thick lines and very thin lines it's very fun but it's very um, experimental well okay I need to use tissue to dry this otherwise the ink is definitely going to bleed through okay the watercolor I was using earlier doesn't seem that vibrant so now I'm going to use Ecoline ink to color this this is the ink you can use in fountain pens or with their Ecoline markers you can also use this to refill um, brush pens but the ink is not uh, pigmented this is dye based ink so the color will fade if exposed to light for long periods of time and this is very difficult for me to open okay I have some ink on my fingernails beneath my fingernails okay so this color definitely more vibrant so I'm just going to color the top and bottom here and now let's draw with colored ink pens so just with ink alone I can draw with so many different styles so for this I'm going to draw um, some with this uh, some parts of the vehicle with this green ink and other parts with black ink just to mix and match and see how it looks okay doesn't seem to be too bad another one this time I'm using this pink color this is the Derwent paint pen or Derwent uh, paint marker or I cannot remember the name there are just too many products from Derwent this is quite fun as well the colored wheels look uh, very uh, interesting 
Let's have some smoke behind. This is water soluble pen. Let's see what hap Let's see what happens when we dissolve the ink. So it seems like this ink it's not like that water soluble, at least on this particular paper. Um, let me dab the brush onto the pen and see what happens. So I can actually get a more vibrant or more obvious color when I dab it like this. You probably need to uh, use the right paper for this pen. So for this sketch, I have colored pencils and crayons. It's a bit difficult to draw with crayons. So I'm just using the crayons here for coloring. And this paper, it has a lot of um, texture. It's fine green texture. So you can see a lot of the white of the paper showing through. Let me just uh, emphasize some details with the colored pencils. This is quite fun as well. This mix and uh, matching thing that's going on. Oh, okay. This is a nice combination. Next, I have colored pencils with water soluble crayons. So the crayons I was using earlier, that's new color, Karen Dutch new color one. This is Karen Dutch new color two, which is water soluble. The earlier one is water resistant, but this is water soluble. Okay, let's wet this. dissolves quite nicely but you can still see the texture of the crayon unless you dissolve them completely and for the wheels I'll be drawing them with um, crayons so I'm using this water soluble crayon to draw the wheels again um, let's wet the bottom here and see if we can draw some shadows with this so when the paper is wet, uh, we can get like really rich colors. This is very different. I mean, the color here, it looks very different compared to this, which is more textured. So as I'm drawing on the wet surface, you can see the color, it sort of sinks into the paper and it doesn't leave uh, a lot of white of the paper. I should probably color the windows as well. So here you can see the texture of the paper again. So I need to wet like the windows. Oh, this dissolves quite easily. Yeah, this Karen Dutch new color too. This is fantastic uh, water soluble crayons. Some details here on the back and also the lights. Um, probably need this to be dry first before I can draw anything. And now let's draw with this magic pencil. So this is nice because um, you get like different colors when you are drawing. And I can use this for shading as well. I wonder how it will look when I use this for shading. Using a pencil like this with multiple colors in the lead or in the core, it makes your sketch look interesting like straight away. Okay, this is the bottom. This is really fun. And this pencil is really nice. So let me just try and shade this part here. So you can see multiple colors. Even the shadows have um, a lot of colors. This is just normal color pencil. So here I'm going to try and blend the yellow with uh, blue. Let's see how it looks. Perhaps a lighter blue might make the green a bit more obvious.
This is water soluble color pencils. Some pencils they don't uh, dissolve that well. Uh, this one is Karen Dutch watercolor pencils. I think it works, but it's not like the best uh, watercolor pencil out there. And when the paper is wet, it doesn't seem like um, the pencil will dissolve into the water. Let's try watercolor now. This is Hansa Yellow and Thalo Green. So I'm painting without the ink lines. So I have to be like very careful to make sure I get the shape right. Painting without the lines, um, it makes you think a bit differently because now you have to plan in advance. You have to think of the shapes, you have to think of uh, what are the areas you need to uh, leave as white. So um, it's a bit more challenging, especially for me because this is not how I usually use watercolor. For the bumper, the white bumper here, I'm not going to paint that. Instead, I'm going to paint the shadows beneath the bumper. And I'm going to paint the wheels, uh, maybe like that. Challenging but fun because it makes you think differently. The windows. This is phthalo blue and um, permanent brown. And now let's use markers. For this, I would want to maybe um, draw with this fine liner first. This is a fine liner with waterproof ink. And then I can color this with the markers. So instead of using green, I'm going to try and blend the colors. So I have yellow. I'm use the chisel tip. It's easier. This is nice yellow. And then let's have blue and see if we can get a green from this mix. And we can get that color. This will definitely look much better with uh, blacks, strong blacks. There, I think it looks much better now. I have not tried pencils yet, so let me just um, use pencils now. So with pencil, you can uh, use this for shading as if uh, you are painting or you can use the pencils for drawing to create line art so the pencil is very versatile so for this sketch I'm using a mix of two I'm using this for shading as well as for drawing oops uh, this should be the the back we can have another one here and for this one let me just shade this very lightly and maybe shade this one much darker so this is what I have so far so the sketches that were drawn with line art, um, they look very different compared to those with like big blocks of colors. And also those that were colored with, uh, or drawn with colored pencils, they are also very different in terms of look compared to those drawn with pen and ink. Um, the ones with pen and ink, I think they should uh, look better if you have like stronger blacks or with blocks of colors like this. So for line art sketches like this, I probably need to add more blacks to create that extra contrast. Otherwise, uh, if it's just line art, sometimes I feel like the um, sketch it looks 
I'm not sure how I can say it, but um, it looks a bit too simple. But sometimes you want simple, of course. Those with multiple colors are within the color. Um, those look really nice, like uh, watercolor. You have um, yellow and blue blending together. And even with this marker sketch, you can see traces of yellow and blue. And the overlaying of the colors creates the green, which makes this sketch look um, really interesting visually. If it's just flat colors, sometimes um, it doesn't look that interesting. So let me just uh, maybe add another color to this crayon sketch. Maybe a red as well. Or maybe yellow. Let's see what happens when you add yellow. I think it looks better now with uh, multiple colors. And color pencil uh, seems to be more versatile compared to crayons. At least when it comes to um, adding little details, drawing little details. Yeah, I think it looks much better now with uh, traces of colors. So this is a very fun exercise you can try on your own. Even if you don't have um, so many tools or supplies, you can actually just vary your drawing style to get a different look. If you are someone who likes to draw with lines, maybe try drawing without lines, maybe draw with a uh, hatching, or maybe use like water soluble ink or mix your lines with other colors, or even mix your ink with colored pencils. All these were actually drawn individually. You can also select a few styles and then um, draw them together in a single sketch and see how they look. That will be quite fun and interesting. All right, um, thanks for watching. I hope this video is fun. I had fun drawing all this. See you guys in the next video. Bye.